lives are we supposed to start the podcast all right one two three unbelievable i think it helps when i don't look at my hand it's like it's like you were born to podcast <laughs> it's like i was born to clap I'm serious it's unbelievable how you just consistently deliver that sound not always and you, i mean you're really fighting like a lot of boobs to make that <laughs> yes. happen you're it's you're absolutely at war with I'm, the sagging dragons i have some geographical issues every tuesday and thursday you fucking deliver yes well i do my best listener today is a fantastic day we have a guest that has traveled a very long distance to Oklahoma City to be with us. So I want to welcome you to I've Had It, a podcast about positivity and being a better person. I'm Jennifer. I'm Angie. She's the star of our show. And today, Zachariah Porter is joining us all the way from New York City. He is the star of Camp Counselor Podcast. He is a comedian. His Instagram and TikTok are L. Oh, L, fall down. You cannot wrap your head around how funny this man is. And he has traveled this far because he wants to sit in the same room as royalty. Isn't that right? <laughs> it's so true. To see the clap live that I've heard so many times, yeah. it took my breath away. I'm still collecting myself. So if I'm a little, yeah. you know why. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. And then when you see the sag and dragons in real time. Right. Listen, the Princess Diana of podcasting, it really is true. <laughs> I'm is. honored Zachary. to be here in royalty. Yes. We're so glad you came. Well, thank you. I love treat. Oklahoma City. I was just telling you guys off camera, it is just so incredibly hot here for anyone that's, I don't know, a heat adverse like I am. Yes. I a little difficult, yeah. but the HVAC in the city is top tier. So yes. congratulations to all the HVAC people here. <laughs> I think the HVAC is so successful. Otherwise, the homicide rate would be astronomical. Understandable. You know, yeah. and, and there would be rioting and things. So that, the, you know, it's like also here, nobody's very environmentally friendly. So they're like, fucking let that CO2 go. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? This is oil and gas country. So everybody's just like, fucking let it rip. Let it rip. And nobody get butt hurt. I think we need to save the planet. Don't. I and mean, that's a trigger warning. We can laugh about that. Exactly. People. Everybody lighten up already. This is the podcast world. <laughs> I've had it. I've had it. <laughs> Everybody is takes. There's so many people that take what we say seriously. Mm -hmm, of course. And, and this entire podcast is basically satire. <laughs> and it's just bitching at this point. All right? right. Totally. And I think bitching is healthy. Bitching is necessary. And the people who don't bitch, I don't trust. I One agree. Million exactly. Because then you're not bitching in front of me and then you're bitching about me. And now we're not yes. in the same bitch page. I'm and not doing it. Everybody who acts like, oh, my life is so great. Everything's so perfect. I'm like, I don't trust you as far as I can pick you up and throw you. Exactly. And then you're not even a fun person either. So right. what, what do we have to talk about at this point? Yeah. No. And then those people, if you notice, like Stepford wife-like people, you meet them and they have this veneer. And then you can, you've known them for 10 years and you never know them better from the first 10 minutes than 10 years later. There's nothing behind yeah. it. Yeah. Nothing. That's such a weird kind of way to live your life too. It's like so inauthentic or unauthentic. And I just think like, that's not the kind of person I want to surround myself with. I, I want to be at a local dive bar with a woman who has a cigarette in her mouth and she's got a lot to tell. Totally. Oh, those absolutely. are my, those are my people, you know? Same. I want somebody who has, has experienced suffering yeah. and owned it <laughs> and become a better person because of it, because uh -huh. everybody experiences suffering. It's what do you do with it once you experience it? Do you deny it and act like a robot and then judge everybody who bitches from time to time? Or do you dig deeper and become a better person? And a more fun person who's completely content with bitching. <laughs> yeah, I, I love how we've started this so motivational. <laughs> totally. To the <laughs> listeners out there, like, congrats. You guys are really strapped in for a great episode. This is going to be good. One million percent. So in staying on brand, Zachariah, please tell us what you've had it with. Um, I've had it with everything. But what I'm really having with it right now is it's wedding culture in general. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm 28 years old. So I'm at this point in my life where everyone's either pushing on a baby or popping a ring on their finger. And I love it. And I love these celebrations. I don't love the commitments that come with people's choices that don't affect me. Right. <laughs> I'm being asked to show up to party after party, right. event after event with an expensive gift. Right. Yeah. That's the rub. These registries are getting really insane. Oh, yeah. And I love it. It's chic to go through. But then I'm looking at it. And I'm like, okay, well, you got engaged to so the engagement party. And then we have the bridal party. And then we have the bachelorette trip. And then the wedding. Because you have to get a gift for everything. Plus with the babies, there's just so many gifts that come with people's decisions that don't have anything to do with me. Right. I it's love to celebrate. But, right. you know, does that make sense? It totally, totally makes sense. And I feel like... 
I feel like the wedding thing is blowing up even more. Yes. And at some point, somebody needs to start waving a red flag and saying, here's the deal. It's not as good as you think it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, these these girls and guys need to be warned. I think it was comedian Chris Rock that said one time, I don't know why everybody's upset about gay marriage. Let them have a crack at it. It's not <laughs> that great. Maybe they'll be better at it. And And it's like, it's like, okay, let's calm down a little bit about this and let's realize like you're going to get in this marriage and whatever broken pieces you have from your childhood and everybody's fucking got them. And then whatever broken pieces your spouse has, that's all going to play out in that marriage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all going to play out and you're going to look at your spouse sometimes and love them, want to jump their bones, have a blast, hold their hand, feel romantic, feel camaraderie. And other days you're going to look at them and think, if I Google how to slowly kill somebody, will the FBI find out? <laughs> right. And they will. And they will find they out. Will. They will. They will. Because I watched yeah. Dateline. Yeah. And I, they found out on Dateline. They found out on Dateline. Keith Morrison, the guy that hosts Dateline, uh-huh. he gets to the bottom of everything, Zachariah. I love that. No, I just I just feel like weddings, I, that, whole, that whole story, that whole life story for people, it just used to feel a little bit more intimate. And a little bit more between the two people. And now it's such a public display of yes. what did I do better than my friend on Instagram? And it doesn't seem as authentic anymore. And it's just so over the top public that I'm like, why am I so wrapped up in this? I'm I'm just a guest here. Right. I'm a friend. Right. You know? When I get married one day, God willing, I'm not inviting anybody. All right. <laughs> my like aunts it. and uncles, I only see on Christmas. You're not getting an invite to this wedding, okay? Right. There's gonna be ten people there. Yeah. Half of them are gonna be animals, okay? Yeah. A justice of the peace. <laughs> And nobody else, okay? I just, I, I've bitched about this so publicly to my friends too lately. I'm like, you know what? I'm keeping it real small, real tight, you know? Right. Let's talk about this component of wedding culture. What? And it is the circle jerk that are reception toasts about, oh. <laughs> about like, I hope that you have had as much joy and love that your father and I have had. And we have been so happy happy and they paint this rosy picture before this couple just immediately walks into this you know there's trappings to marriage Mm -hmm. you know and everybody feels it to some extent and those of you out there that want to type in the comment section i've been happily married for 21 years and never disliked my husband fuck off (laughs) yeah i've been in a relationship for three years and we just like each other every other week but that's what life is that is right totally it it flows totally and then like in knowing that like if you have an awareness like my husband's bothering me this week, but I could be the problem. Right. Yeah. And once you realize that, <laughs> yes. that maybe you're projecting that it's not him, maybe it's you and you start growing more as a person. But I, we have to talk, let's talk about the circle jerk speeches. Yeah, it really is. And I love when the maid of honor gives a really emotional speech and it seems really <laughs> prepared. And I'm like, okay, that was giving. I like that. And then we have then we have like the best man come up. And you know he didn't write it. He didn't write a right. goddamn thing. And he's just embarrassing himself up there. <laughs> yeah. Drunk. And then yeah. I eat drunk, completely shit faced. Yeah. And then you're watching and you're like, this is just so incredibly it's, it's so uncomfortable for us all to watch and then we have the parents and then the, the side parents and the families it's just it's so it doesn't seem genuine to me it doesn't and what about the people who start humble bragging in their toast and making a uh, speech passive aggressively about them oh that's a really bad way to live your entire life to yes. make you turn it back on yourself y'all have experienced this right yes and i hate people like that wedding it wedding baby shower whatever on earth, I don't want to be around a humble bragger. Yeah. It's rampant insecurity. They don't even know it either. You can tell. No, right, right over no. their head. Breathtaking lack of self awareness <laughs> as they're doing it. It's like, I knew when I first met John that Jane would be the perfect spouse. So I set them up. And much to my surprise, they fell madly in love. Who knew I was such a great matchmaker? <laughs> <laughs> And they're sitting there and they're like, you know what? For all the breakfasts that you made us on the couch, I didn't like you initially, but now coming to know, it's just, it's so self-soaked and like, I don't know, their own selves where it's like, this isn't even about, who is this wedding about now? It feels like everybody's taking a turn, taking a moment in the spotlight here. It just doesn't seem like it's supposed to be that way. Sometimes I feel this, and I'm sure everybody's going to fucking explode in the comment section, but I have to say it. Say it. 
Sometimes I feel like weddings are selfish. Yeah, no, it is. It's completely selfish. And then everybody gets drug in and it's like, and the bride and groom are, this is our day. This is our day. God damn it. And then we're all like, you know, at some destination, you got to go to some rat trap welcome party. You're on their itinerary and you traveled that far. And sometimes I just feel like it's. I I just, sometimes I just feel like they're selfish and that could probably be about me, everybody, (laughs) because I'm agoraphobic and I don't like to leave my house. Okay. Right. So it's about you then right there. Probably. Yeah. But but I've still had it and I think they're selfish for the permanent record, Kylie. This is your show. Exactly. (laughs) Well, and I agree with the same concept is like, you have to have a photographer when you're, when you get engaged, everybody has to make a production Mm -hmm. for Instagram. Yeah. And then you go to all the showers, same thing. And then you go, you know, get the dress. So you have all the bridesmaids getting the dress together. We have to post that on Instagram. It's become more of a social media so fest. A lot, of, a lot of forced gatherings. It, and I right. don't like to be forced together with I don't people either. that much. What about the bride who's going to use those like wedding photos for the next 12 years on Instagram? Yes. She's oh, like, I, I just want to post it one more time for my bestie, throwing it back <laughs> to the best day of my life. <laughs> Girl, get, get real here. I can't do what it. What about Happy Father's Day to my dad and it's on the wedding day? Right. And they just recal- I mean, recirculate those over and over and yeah. over. Because, I mean, it's like, is that peak? Like, if you're still, if you're married 10 years and you're still posting your wedding photos, to me, and I am a uh, non-licensed psychiatrist and psychologist. <laughs> yep. For, but you play one on a podcast. For the, yes. <laughs> For me, that makes me think they're thinking about happier times in the marriage yeah. versus the current state. That's just a little Freudian analysis I'm throwing in for free for the listener. I think it's because they had their hair and makeup done and they were thinner. I think it's strict vanity. Probably. Yeah, that's just it kind of goes hand in hand with the people who are like obsessed with their high school years. It's like oh. these, the glory days should always be kind of like, I don't know, I'm always like pushing for more of Absolutely. like what I want, you know, and I don't I don't love to look back like that. And some people are going to continue to look back on their wedding days, their like ultimate moment. Step into a world of nonstop action on DraftKings Casino. Play the classics like blackjack, roulette and slots. Plus, enjoy exclusive games you can't find anywhere else. Right now, new customers can get a deposit match of up to $100 in casino credits when you deposit $5 or more. All you have to do is sign up, select the offer, make your deposit, and start playing from a full suite of games. Your way is the only way to play on DraftKings Casino. Play online on your time, in your space, and within your means. It's safe, secure, and reliable so you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you're ready. Download the DraftKings Casino app now. Sign up with promo code HADIT and new customers get a deposit match of up to $100 in casino credits when you deposit $5 or more. Only on DraftKings Casino with promo code HADIT. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. Please play responsibly in partnership with Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races in West Virginia. All games regulated by the West Virginia Lottery. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. 21 or older. Physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. One per opt-in and new customer. Minimum $5 deposit. Max match 100 in casino credits, which require one times play through within seven days. See terms at casino.draftking.com slash players choice restrictions apply pumps tell the listener what you've been bragging about all the time nonstop lately i am so happy because with just thrive i have regular normal bowel movements for the first time in my life i feel accomplished i feel better i cannot say enough about how much i love just thrive probiotics listeners she'll text me or call me and she'll be like you got to call me immediately <laughs> Or call me back immediately. And I'm thinking like juice city. I'm about to get some juicy gossip. Instead, she's calling to tell me about how regular and how fantastic her bowel movements are. And I'm telling you guys, this Just Thrive stuff, if it can work for pumps and her gut, yes, there is nothing that it cannot fix. I've been taking the Just Thrive psychobiotic. I'm a beacon of mental health. It's unbelievable. <laughs> The dogs are on the probiotic too. Listener, if you're ready to take control of constipation, bloat, and stress and live your healthiest life yet, you can get 20% off your first 90-day bottle of Just Calm and Just Thrive probiotic today. Visit JustThriveHealth.com and use promo code HADIT. You know what I love about drinking this liquid death? What do you love about it? To the viewer... It looks like we're just sitting here getting hammered. 
They might think we are, but we are not. We are super hydrated with their fabulous, crisp, clean spring water. I know. You think it's going to be like an energy drink yes. or a beer? Not on our watch. Nope. We are beacons of health over here with our liquid death water, and I love the flavors. Yes, and it's hydrating. It feels so good to drink it. What about that merch I got us, those little matching sweatpants and matching t-shirt? Did we not look adorable? So cute. And my boys were fighting over the shirt, and I was like, I'm sorry, it's mine. Because that's how cool we are with our Liquid Death. Listener, you can find Liquid Death's healthy beverages on Amazon or at a retailer near you. And I've had it podcast listeners get 20% off their first Liquid Death apparel purchase available exclusively at liquiddeath.com slash had it. Exclusions may apply. That's liquiddeath.com slash had it. Okay, you do on your Instagram some impersonations of an East Coast overbearing mother. Yes. And Pumps hasn't seen this. Would you please impersonate a mom getting her daughter ready to, you know, back in the bridal suite before she's going to walk down the aisle before the wedding? Yeah. Can you just free ball it and and do it? Usually I have a wig on to really soak me into the (laughs) character here. Right. But she'd walk in and she'd say, you know what, honey? Our relationship wasn't the best, me and your father. And that's why he's not here today. <laughs> but you, you could be so much better than we ever were. Okay? So I'm going to go get some dunks for us. I ate coffee for you. And this is going to be a good day. Just look pretty. Suck it in. Suck it in. <laughs> and honestly, good life advice. Always suck it in in a photo. You know? Always suck it in Last night I suck it in for a photo with a couple girls. And I'm thinking about it right now. I'm like, God. Oh. The shirt was tight. It was snug. I didn't suck it in. I'll pay for that on that tag photo later. My husband, yes. my husband gets tortured by stuff like this. Yeah. Like if, he, if there's a photo taken and he feels like there's a slight look of a man boob or oh. I mean, he just, I mean, he, he'll like, let me see that again. And he'll be like, oh God, please don't post it. And naturally, I immediately pop it up on my story. As right. you should. <laughs> yeah. Humble him, you know? Totally. I love your totally. accent. Your New York mother accent is Thank fantastic. You. Yeah. So it's, it's, everyone thinks it's New York. I'm from Massachusetts and that's the accent there. In Massachusetts. And I was just raised by women, always around women my entire life. And that's why I play so many like women characters. Yeah. Because I just, I enjoy that presence. I love the female presence. Oh, totally. And I mean, when you, listener, if you go to his uh, Instagram and TikTok, I mean, you just, you will not start, la- <laughs> stop laughing. It's that type of content. And it's so relatable because even though our moms would speak in a Southern accent, right. a mom is a mom. Yeah. Yes. That yep. kind of interpersonal relationship and you just nail it well thank you what other dead horses do you want to drag out and beat i mean i think we have murdered weddings <laughs> yeah we hit it um so this is another one for me um it's it's customers that go in and, and they treat restaurant workers with disrespect mm-hmm. and it's like and it's so it, so i was actually at a breakfast place this morning and the sign said i was in oklahoma the sign said it was like oh like basically like be patient because the world is short staff so just like be kind you know what i mean i'm like the fact that we have to remind grown adults with a preschool sign right. is unbelievable it is. to me. It's it is. crazy. What do you think in particular about people that order an item and maybe the restaurant slammed and the item comes out and it's not exactly correct and they immediately motion for the waiter to come over and send it back to the kitchen? What do you think about those kinds of people, Zachariah? If it's an allergy, I understand. If it's not, not an, an allergy, allergy, just suck it up and eat it, okay? <laughs> because this public display of just insanity exactly. is a little embarrassing. I worked in the restaurants for eight years. I did too. There's a way to do it. And there's a way to get what you ordered, right? I understand that. But it's just when people like, I don't know, lead with disrespect, it's embarrassing. Okay. First of all, she's talking about me. What did you do? Just please tell us. I'm really bad about like if my order's not right, Mm -hmm. but I also was a server forever and ever. So you said it right. I never blame the the staff. I'm like, I'm so sorry. This is not right. Uh-huh. I know it wasn't you. I know it was something that's, in the kitchen. That's, it's no big deal. I'm so nice. That, we can no. call 10 of my friends right now. Let's call your kids. Oh. Let's call your kids. I want to phone a friend. I that's want to phone a kid. I get impatient. I want to phone a kid. That's, and I yeah. guarantee you these kids would say, how many times have you left a restaurant or a waiter walked away from the table and your kids have said to you, mom, quit being rude. Tell the truth. Well, they don't say rude. They're just how stop many times acting you're that not way. answering. A lot. 
a lot, but yeah. I'm really nice about it. Yeah, if you're nice, I I'm understand. I'm nice about it. And if it's just a little, like I got sausage instead of bacon with yeah. my breakfast order, that's fine. But it, when it's like, I said no A, B, C, and D, and I got A, B, C, and D, I'll be like, hey, this is wrong if I can't like peel it off or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I'm nice about it. That's okay. Well, what about this, right? So I worked at an Olive Garden for okay. five years. And that's an absolute hell of a job. I was hell. a hostess at an Olive Garden when I was 16 years old. So you're already aware. From the pasta we make to lasagna we bake. <laughs> da, 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 we're wishing you a happy birthday. How did the song go? That wasn't our song. That was not our song. Oh that was gosh. ours, but For... this was like 1990. Oh, you got the classic hits back then. Oh, ours y'all... was just happy birthday. That's it? Yeah, it was just the classic. You didn't do the Olive Garden? like. No, and I think that really would have set me over the edge. That would have yeah, been too cute. Lot. Like yeah. I, was, I was into it. Yeah. I was 16 years old. It was one of my first jobs. I was a hostess. I didn't ever complicate it. I was efficient. Yeah. I was good at seating people. I worked on not double seating. I took a lot of pride in it. And you smell like garlic all the fucking time. Yeah, the shirts are so. Okay, so go on. No, I would just, I would have like parents bringing their kids in and the kids would throw mountains of food on the floor and then they'd look at you and they'd be like, oh my God, how crazy. So, so sorry. And they'd walk out. <laughs> and they didn't pick it up? No. And it, like, if it's if it's crumbs, this is whatever. But this was pounds of spaghetti. And I think it just has this trend where people are going to restaurants and like completely clocking out of being a human being. Right. And just abusing staff. And I've had it. It's so embarrassing. And now I'm on the other side of it where I don't work in a restaurant, but I go out with people. When I see like other people, I don't know, snappy, like this, that, and they're, or they're a mess. It just, these are people, you know what I mean? Right. Tip well, be polite and just relax. Okay. You're not cooking. I always tip. Extra good. Good, I do too. Especially Always. if I send back. All can be forgiven with a tip. You know? Yes. And we need to inject into here that these waiters make like $2 an right. hour. Yep. And our governments have done nothing about paying people a livable wage. And it's corporate exploitation on us, the consumer, but it is what it is for right now. And people are just hustling. I waited tables. You waited tables. You waited tables. Kylie, do you wait tables? Yeah. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. I think <laughs> like it's a great you, job. It's a great job. Yeah, it's great money too. Yeah. It is yeah. great money, but you have to tip people. Even if I have a total yeah. bitch of a waitress or a complete asshole, yeah. I still tip well because I think, I don't know what's going on in their life. Right. They're broken. They're having a bad day. I still minimum 20%. And that's good. That's the way to live for sure. You know, when you waited tables, and I guess you probably waited tables in the East Coast, but I always like to ask this question because I know what the answer is. You know what the answer is. The worst tippers, any shift... Anytime, what day of the week, AM or PM shift? I don't know. What would you what were you what were you gonna say? Tell me. Church crowd. It's oh, Sunday morning. My God. Sunday morning. Not you worshiping to the Lord and then coming to berate me at, at on the on the lunch. <laughs> they, were the, they were the rudest. Unbelievable. The worst, the worst, the worst tippers. Oh, I know. The biggest dicks on the planet. Are Dressed the, in pastel. Totally. <laughs> soaked in the devil, honestly. <laughs> 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 Terrible people, for Terrible. sure. Terrible. Yeah, I know. And then I, I got this a couple of times. I'm not joking. I would get a tip too. I'm not gonna lie about it. But I get a, a, a fake dollar that was like a Jesus dollar, uh-uh. and I'm looking for like, I'm like, what is it? A one dollar? I'm like, oh no, they grow on the credit card stuff. But this is this is a pamphlet for me to go to their church. <laughs> it tips fifteen percent. <laughs> You know what I mean? Oh my God. I couldn't believe it. The proselytizing is out of control. You, now that Look you're up. saying it, you're right. You, the after church crowd is crazy. The they were the worst. And they I mean, mob at the same time. I remember yes. I would yeah. work a shift and I would get like, I worked three or four hours and they would tip like $2 here, a dollar there. And oh. they'd write like, you know, sign the credit card and put Psalms and put some Bible <laughs> verse with, with a dollar fifty tip. And I'd go home and I'm like, I didn't even make minimum wage. Yeah. Like I literally, after I tipped out the bus boy, tipped out the bartender, I'm walking home with like $25 and I'm just like, I hate these people. I know. Yeah. God, mm-hmm. terrible. Are you too young to remember the smoking section inside restaurants? I am. I, when I was a little kid, my Nana would take me out and she always wanted to sit in the smoking section. But at that point they were already moving that out. Yeah. So I don't, that's, I love to go to like a casino now because I have right. a drink at a bar and smoke a cigarette. And I'm like, this is how the way life was supposed to be living. Yeah. Oh, for sure. We used to fight over who got the smoking section because the smokers and the drinkers, they always were in the smoking section. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. always tipped great. Always oh tipped better. I bet. Yeah, because those people, they're out and about. This is right. a little treat for them. You they're wanna, always there. You want to hear something that's a total trip? What? We used to take flights. Imagine yes. being on an airplane and there was a smoking and non-smoking <laughs> section in first class. <laughs> yes. How are you separating that? There's not. The first feet. three seats, row one, two, and three, were well, non-smoking. Okay. 
four, five, and six were smoking. Ripping them. Right. Total. I mean, double shot, triple yep. shot, fucking go, ripping through them. And then you'd go to coach and it would be the first, let's say there's, you know, 50 rows. The first 25 were smoking. The last were none. And everybody just, I remember I went to Japan when I was like 19 years old, smoked cigarettes, went with my friend Kazue. She's this Japanese girl that I went to college with. She was an exchange student. And so this is long flight. We get hammered <laughs> on the flight and chain smoke. I must have smoked two packs of cigarettes and the ashtray was in the arm yeah. rest. So you'd flip this thing open. You're just smoking on the airplane. It's the best. It's the yeah. best. Well, you were so bored too. You're on a, you're on a flight. That's exactly. What else do you have to do but drink and smoke? Drink and smoke. Bring it back. Hey, can we bring it back, Delta? It's Come so on. <laughs> Let's stay playful, Delta. Come on. It's so funny though, because when you think about it, like, it, it always smelled like cigarette smoke. There was no ventilation difference. Nice. Oh, those poor people who didn't smoke. Oh, like, don't I'm you know they in. hated us? That Sunday yeah. brunch crowd, they were madder than Terrible. hornets on planes too, oh, I bet. God. That's funny though. I wish yeah. it was still like that a little bit. Do you smoke? I did because it was restaurants. I smoked for like 10 years. Yeah. I started smoking because I had a crush on a boy that smoked. Oh, yeah. so cute. It is cute until you're like, wait, I'm ruining my lungs now for a man <laughs> that I'm not even with anymore. But Let yeah. me ask you this. Yeah. Would you, what was your favorite cig of the day? Uh, my favorite cig of the day was an after, it was a night cigarette. Like maybe after I ate or after I drank. A drunk cigarette still to this day. You could catch a me on A drunk cigarette. Lot. I quit yeah. drinking because... I can't smoke anymore. Right. Yeah. It's the also, best part. because my hav- husband's a recovering alcoholic. Yeah. And that's a way for me to support him. But also, like, I can't have a drink without a cigarette. Were it's you guys morning tempting. smokers? Yeah. Fuck yes. You that were? First cup of coffee smoke. Oh, uh, that was my yeah. favorite. Set the tone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Zachary, what else? What other horse do we have to drag out and beat? Um, I, so how do I, how do I phrase this? There is an epidemic going on in this country right now, and it is the um, destruction of public restrooms. Oh. Uh, and there are people here that I think are domestic terrorists. <laughs> I completely agree with you. I, have you ever gone to the bathroom in a Marshalls or a Target and walked in there and said, what the hell is happening Just here? happened. Yes, yeah. I have. It is so vulgar. It is yes. so disgusting. And I think we should be prosecuting these people <laughs> to too. the fullest extent <laughs> of the too. law. So I have a plan. I think we should hire some sort of um, state officials here. Okay, I, we all pay enough taxes here. Right. Get somebody on the ground here and have them checking bathrooms and identifying who these people are <laughs> to make sure that the rest of us can live our lives in peace. Boots on the ground. Boots on the ground. Yes. Figure out these menaces and just, we need to fix this. I have an idea. What is it? Okay, we have this bathroom uh, marshal. Marshal, marshal. We have the bathroom marshal at the door, mm-hmm. okay? And you have to show him your bathroom app. You know how Uber gives you five stars yes. and this you rate the driver driver five stars? Yes. So he looks at your app, okay? If you have below four stars, no soup for you. <laughs> Go to the 7-Eleven. You yes. cannot use this potty. <laughs> yeah. The marshal then will, if you have four or above, he'll escort you to your toilet and say, <laughs> once you flush, please open the door and I will come get you to do an inspection. Yeah. <laughs> And there also needs to be a sink inspection because let me tell you what else fucking really checks. Yes, let's hear it. Let's hear it. You wash your hands. The water goes everywhere. You go ahead and you go over and you get a towel, right? Now, sometimes it's the air blower, but some places still have the like towels. When you get the towel, go ahead and do a wipe down on the sink. Agree. Yeah. Get that extra water off of there. Yeah. Get, even go ahead and get the faucet head. I mean, just go ahead and shine that shit up. Just takes two extra seconds. It's a team effort, everybody. everybody it is. Do your it's part. T- yeah. So true. It's Let me yeah. tell you what you haven't had to deal with in the women's restrooms. Let's hear it. Tampons and maxi pads. Oh, oh what's ha- just revolting. let me know what's happening over here. I mean, sometimes you walk in and there's blood on a toilet seat. Yeah. A tampon that's not <laughs> flushed. It looks like a murder scene. So yeah. how did that person get up and just say, you know what? I'm good with this. I know. That's what I don't get. Like people that like poop in public and don't flush it. I'm like, what the fuck is going on yeah. that you think anybody wants to see that? And then maybe they want you to see it. You just never know. That's what fucks. it is. This is a, this is an epidemic. And these Shit are terrorists. exhibitionists? Yes. Oh. We have pooping exhibitionists? I think we do. Yeah. And they're at the Marshalls. They're at the Target. <laughs> they're in, They're everywhere. I'm going to tell you something, listener. If you were a shit exhibitionist, you're banned from I've Had It podcast <laughs> and Camp Counselor podcast. We are both uniting on this cause. Statistically, there's one of you out there. And this is this is your come to Jesus moment. <laughs> Fix the behavior. Flush the I've fucking it. toilet. It's Let's talk hard. about some steps that people can take. Okay. So you mm-hmm. walk into a restroom. Here's what I do. Yeah. I go ahead because I have to sit. So I go ahead and take 
toilet paper down and I do a wipe down of the seat. And I still don't sit on the seat, but usually there's pee spots on it. And I wipe it down before I pee. I hover and I bounce out an eight count as I pee. And I say five, six, seven, eight. And I'm peeing one, two. Until I'm done, I get more tissue, wipe. Then I get another fresh tissue, wipe the seat down, reach up, flush the toilet with my foot, out, wash my hands. If paper towels are available, do a wipe down of the sink and exit the bathroom. That's a perfect plan. That was the perfect plan. And I also love the like the core workout in <laughs> yes. the middle of that. And and glute yeah. and hamstring and quad. That's it. That's amazing. And I you if you eight count it out. Now pumps bare back toilets. I bare back toilets. I just don't I'm not a germaphobe at all. I mean, no. I, if it, if there's like tinkle or something, then I'll hover. But normally I just flop down. Yeah. And that's okay. You know what? Listen, we've made it this far. If that's what's <laughs> right. going to take you out, <laughs> so be it. Well, the, the, in the men's room, we have the urinal. And that's what's so shocking to me because it's just a big old hole in the wall. Yeah. How are we missing this thing? But I have noticed that some bars put these little stickers in the urinals, it'll be like a little fly or a little blue dot, and it will prevent people from pissing on the floor because now we've created a game for the men. Right. Oh, we got to hit that oh. thing. It's kind of brilliant. It's it's a little sticker, and we've solved it because that's how simple men can be sometimes. A little blue dot on a urinal, and we have an activity. Okay. I have a lot of questions I have a about lot of questions the urinals. Too. Yeah, let's hear it. Okay, because I've never obviously peed in a urinal. So as a man, you go into the urinal, and let's say like a super hot guy's next to you. Yeah. Do you side eye the dick? Uh, no, I don't, because I am a five foot nine gay man, and if I do anything inappropriate, <laughs> someone could swing at me, and I'd be on the floor. You know what I mean? But right. I don't do it. No, I don't know. I guess some people do. Well, that's how some people hook up in this culture here. Oh, right. Really? You mean? Okay. My question is. Well, if you don't side eye the dick, but okay, so you're walking through and you see somebody and you notice they have a huge penis. Can yeah. you look? Well, y- y- you- yeah, your eyes are going to wander. So this happens to it at old at old baseball games. I don't know if you guys know this about me. I'm a huge sports fan. Me too. I'm joking. I'm literally not. But they have <laughs> some of these old baseball fields. They have these like troughs. Yes. So people are just whipping them out in yes. there. And then, hey, you're going to see what you're going to see. And I'll tell you this. Nine out of ten times, it's not what you want. It <laughs> no, it's not. Horrifying. <laughs> it's not. The, 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 the off-scale oh. ratio with men and dick size is really more epidemic than anything we've talked about. Yeah. Big men with small penises, small men with big penises. Right. Well, the man you're gonna, that's going to show you what he's got is not the man that you want to see. That's All right. right. You know? So you might be too young to remember this, but this is one of my favorite political scandals of all time. It was a senator named Senator Larry Craig, and he was the senator of some mountain state. I think it was like Wyoming or it was Utah. Utah. Anyway, he is in like the Detroit, and I might get the details of the airport wrong. It's been many years. He is a United States senator, and he's traveling like either through Minneapolis or Detroit, somewhere around where all the lakes are, right? Mm-hmm. And I guess there had been all this talk on some online thing that this one stall at this one's men's restroom, 100%, you yeah. can do some gay stuff at the airport. Okay. Yeah. So this U.S. Senator sitting U.S. Senator goes to, and the sign was you sit down at the stall and then you tap your foot over to the next one. And then the guy there knows that you're there because you've seen the site and y'all can do gay stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he's doing the tap stuff, and then the guy taps back, and then he starts tapping more. Well, then the guy comes over, and it's like busted federal agent, handcuff. It was a sting operation. And, of course, this guy had had been, you know, voting against – this was before the Supreme Court voted to make gay marriage legal. So he had voted for – all this anti-gay stuff. Right. He was a huge Bible thumper. You know, the whole pedigree that you have Mm -hmm. for – you know, closet gay sex with white men. Right. He was constantly on TV, constantly in the paper, the, you know, the evils of homosexuality, blah, 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 blah. Super homophobic. Total homophobe. Yeah. Isn't that so weird how it always ends up being those people? And it's like not, I haven't heard that story like specifically, but I've heard this story with government officials being on Grindr or hooking up on the low. And then their like political agenda is just so homophobic, but I just don't understand it. It's like, what are we compensating for here? Right. now when I meet people or I find out who's super homophobic, now that's my instant thought process because like history shows that, okay, well, you're repressing something right. here. That's and it's right. embarrassing. Yes. At an airport, as a senator, yeah. hire somebody. There's people. There's I'm like, if on. you want to have sex, I mean, 
Lindsey Graham seems to have kept it pretty private to date. There was that whole ladybug thing on the internet yeah. there for a while, but that thing got squashed out. I mean, I don't li li listen. I mean, it's no secret to our listeners that I don't particularly care for Republicans or Republican policies. Mm -hmm. But I mean, an airport? Of yeah. course, I'm like tapping the vein, reading every article I can. <laughs> My mother is obsessed with gay Republican scandals. I mean, she just yeah. like, you know, is frothing at the mouth. She can't get enough of it. She loves it so much. Airports are a spot, though, for sure. Oh, really? Are they? Yeah. It's funny. I think there's just historically been these like spots for gay people to hook up because you couldn't. And now now with apps and stuff, like right. you can do what you got to do. But yeah, I'm, I, I believe it completely. Wow. Really? Uh, I would have never guessed. Not the sting operation, though, on this. I'm <laughs> Jeez. Isn't that the best thing ever, though? And yeah. they bust him. And then, of course, he has to resign. And Karma. It's a misunderstanding. I wasn't tapping for that. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Karma is a bitch. Can you imagine being in a stall and tapping someone by accident multiple times? Like, what are you fighting for your life in there? Right. Facts. Yeah. When we first started this podcast, people were like, y'all have got to have merch. And I'm like, okay. We can't do merch. We don't know how. How on earth are we going to do that and mail it to people and charge them for it and keep track of all of it? Like, I couldn't even wrap my head around what we were supposed to do. It's unbelievable how easy Shopify made that for us. Shopify is the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. And if two morons like Pumps and I can get on there and set up an account to help get you all merch... You guys can do it too for your businesses. No matter how large or small your business is, Shopify is the perfect fit. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash had it, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash had it to take your business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash had it. Listener, I cannot tell you how worried I was about the safety and well-being of the star of our show. She was living in a home with zero security system. Thankfully, I got her a Simply Safe system and had it installed. They've got eyes on an intruder. Agents can confirm to 911 dispatchers that it is real and request a police dispatch. They have advanced motion detection and vision AI and all sorts of bells and whistles. Pumps, do you feel safer? I feel safer when I'm there and when I'm not there. It's so comforting. And it's very easy to use. Very easy. Very easy to install. We even figured it out. <laughs> right. Right now, I've had it listeners get a special 20% off any Simply Safe system when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring. This huge offer is for a limited time only. So visit simplysafe.com slash had it. That's simplysafe.com slash had it. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Okay, Zachariah, it's time to play a game. And it is the hottest game on the World <laughs> Wide Web. And I don't know if you've heard of it. I'm sure you probably have because everybody's talking about it. It's called Had It or Hit It. Everybody's talking about <laughs> it. Everybody's talking about it because Princess Diana is involved in it. <laughs> Please. Oh my God. Welcome to Had It or Hit It. I would hit it. Had it. Had it. I hit it every day, sometimes twice a day. Okay, Zachariah, mm -hmm. had it or hit it, canned cocktail culture. I've had it. I, <laughs> there can't be another. There's no more room for more canned cocktails. <laughs> I was just at a party the other day, and there was the Sunny D spiked seltzers. Really? I draw the line. Because now we're just putting <laughs> fake orange juice in a, in a can with vodka and saying, sell it, sell it, put it on the shelves. We don't need any more canned beverages. We have the white claws. We Agreed. have a high noon. We're done. <laughs> Agreed. I just, I need for the permanent record, I need, since you've come all the way to Oklahoma City, I just need to go ahead and know your position on the large water bottle community that carries like Stanley cups and oversized water bottles with them every single place they go. I, so I, I'm not a part of it. Okay. But I do kind of think it's a little chic. I like a girl that looks hydrated. You know I what I mean? love that. I do. Yeah, it Mariah. looks a little chic. Why do you hate it? I love it. I always oh, have one. I oh, hate wait. it. Oh wait, she I don't hates. have one, but I can appreciate the aesthetic. Does it fit in your cup holder? I've always yes, wanted that. Yes, it does. Wow. What color is yours? I have several. I have. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I have a gold, a silver. A blue. Do you match them with your outfit? Because you're better. Oh, no, I don't. I don't even match my purses with my outfit. I just do the one that's clean in the rotation from the dishwasher and all that. Is it like a Stanley cup or is it like, have you seen those ones the workout girls are using where it's like the two gallons and the check marks and they're like, almost got it. 
Keep drinking. I do have one of those, but I never use it because what? I think- What? Those well, are I, crazy. I, I ordered it off Amazon while I was back ordered my Stanley. This was way back when. I didn't have my glasses on when I ordered it off Amazon. So I didn't realize it was like, you go girl. You've almost yep. got it. And I was Stop. like, this is Stop. embarrassing. Stop. It's so there weird. is a giant oversized cup with motivational messages as you drink it down. Yeah. I, yes. It's like it's a- It's not than a the, cup. Yeah. It's, it's not like a cup where it has a handle. It's just like a- water bottle. Why didn't I know about this? Probably because I was just like, I'm never going to use this because of the inspirational quotes on the side. They're bigger than your Stanley though. They're definitely, those are like almost, I think it's a gallon. Yeah. There's definitely different sizes. That's alarming and troubling. And I I asked myself, who is looking at this saying, I can do this (laughs) because my cup says I can. Somebody, because they're putting it on there in mass production. Yeah. I've seen a lot of them. I think if you're looking for motivation from a cup... (laughs) Yeah, got bigger that problems. bar is so goddamn low. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and maybe they need it then. Yeah, maybe right. they do. Maybe we've they... hit this level. I need the maybe cup. Maybe they need that cup. Yeah. Maybe they need that cup. Okay, this is something we've talked about a lot, and this is an issue plaguing the globe. What is it? <laughs> Fake food allergies. Oh my god! I was at a restaurant the other day, and this guy said he was allergic to arugula. So immediately, <laughs> I can't stay in my own lane here. And like my boyfriend's talking to you and I'm like, shh, 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 I don't want to hear what going. And he's like, and then the girls are calling him out. He's an older gentleman too. So the, his wife calls him out or whatever. He's like, no, it's a real allergy. So I get on my phone because I've never heard this before. I'm like, can you be allergic to arugula? It is so rare. And maybe he was, but he's a fucking liar. And now the kitchen staff has to reset the knives and reset the, like everything. It's such a hassle. And it's so, I don't know. You could just say you don't like it. You know right. what I mean? It's not going to kill you. Okay. Had it or hit it. Places that don't have good HVAC. Well, I've had it completely. <laughs> I will say the studio here. You guys, you guys are hitting it. You guys are a great <laughs> job here. No, but I've had it. I just think if you're going to invite me to somewhere, an outdoor barbecue, if there's no place for me to reprieve, I have some cold, you know what I mean? I'm not going. You know what Agreed. I mean? We're, we're too advanced in 2023 to not have AC working Agreed. in certain places. I totally agree. Yeah. Agreed. What When you sleep at night, what do you turn your thermostat to? Whatever the lowest option is at all times. <laughs> wherever, really? wherever, so you'd go I'm down in. to 60 or 58? Yeah, because then I'll just bundle up. I'll keep bundling Me up. Me too. I'm I like a little squirrel that yes. burrows. Yeah, you can't sleep in the heat. Oh my God. What's, no. your, what's your sleep temp? My sleep temp is 68 and I have two blankets. Wow, you're a little, yeah, you're not that, that's a little, that's not too cold though. With two I go blankets 66. Too. Yeah. I'm a 66. Yeah. I'm surprised you're not 69. Oh. <laughs> I'm 69 during the day. How do you feel about had it or hit it? All the iPad tipping for non-tippable actions. I've had it. I've had it. I was at Beyonce a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I bought a $55 t-shirt. The girl spins the iPad. I said, you better spin that back around. <laughs> you pulled the t-shirt out of a box. You're not going to tip for this. What's the t-shirt <laughs> we're tipping you because you put a t-shirt in a bag for me that is not a tippable that's not tippable i agree and you know what the deal is again i want to say as we talk about all this stuff this is consumer exploitation right. by large corporations yeah. because our government will not act to raise the minimum wage to livable wages it's also taking away from the people whose like jobs are tippable right now they're getting like now they're not getting it i'll, I'll tip by like barista you know what i mean like i'll always for sure. tip that kind of stuff I was at the mechanic the other day, and I'm like, is there going to be a tip thing here for the oil change? <laughs> Are we you know? tipping here now, too? We're tipping everywhere now, and that's what I it know. is. I know, and it kind of makes me sad because it's like, I feel bad. Like, now if you pick up a to-go order that they put in a box, you have to tip 15%. I mean, I guess, I because it's gone up from 10. I always thought 10 was fine. Okay, when so I 10 used still to work good? takeout, and I was like, I okay. I expected 10 when yeah, I got okay. takeout. Okay, so I do 15 now, though. Yeah, because it kind of, you kind of have to. Yeah, right. You know? We get forced into all this. Yeah, because then they're putting the 30% there, and I'm like, well, well. Yeah, no, and we're not I don't that far. Dick, and I don't want to dick over the worker. No, right. Exactly, you know, yeah. so it's like, because it, I did work in a restaurant, and I have had, you know, low paying jobs before yeah. when I was trying to, you know, establish my career, and I know what that's like. So I'm just like, oh. But it, it is exploitation of, you know, the consumer. But what about people who try to turn their hobby into a side hustle? I feel like I'm being fresh on this because that's what I did with my life. I would this like making videos was a hobby and then turned it into <laughs> queer. But I I've ha- I've had it because this girl I went to high school with, she makes the most disgusting looking chocolate covered strawberries I've ever seen. And she posts, Well, guess it's turn to turn this into an LLC, you guys. <laughs> I'm opening a business and it's like her chocolate dipped strawberry. Come on, girl. 
<laughs> and you should see what she's charging. How much would you pay for one heinous looking <laughs> Like chocolate covered strawberry. Maybe like 75 cents. She's charging $5 a pop. Shut up. <laughs> I'm not joking. I and bet it's like Hershey's syrup out of a bottle. Right. There's like, there's this like shredded paper and they're in a box. And you know, everyone deserves to have a side hustle, but yeah. you did it. You did it one throw. You know, this isn't your passion and it doesn't need to be a business. Yeah. Right. She's getting the, she, she was asking people about LLCs who, one, which one of my friends has LLCs the day after she posts this new business venture. <laughs> Girl, it had four likes. Okay, I don't think we need to go down this road yet, but oh my God, I've had it. I've had it. Yeah, yeah. The internet is exposing us to a lot of bad ideas that people have right. mm -hmm. that they try to take to fruition and it's all done on a public scale. It's so fun though. It is. It is. Oh it's my God. It is. And then it's kind of like, you know, because truth be told, back when we were young, there wasn't, you know, a internet. So we probably did a but We did so much fucked up shit. We're so lucky none of it is. But now <sighs> it's lucky. like- you're, you know, you're out there and then everybody sees it. It's awful. I've kind of had it with a lot of that too. Okay. Had it or hit it. People that are sanctimonious and say that they're above shit talking. Yeah. We've already said this. I've, I've had it. I've had it. had it. I don't trust you. You're a liar. You're <laughs> clearly very boring and you have something to hide on about yourself because certain people won't shit talk to you because then they want it back on them. Right. And I can respect that a little bit because you're trying to protect your peace and you know that like if I say this, they could come out. But I don't know. My If you're in my immediate group, you can best believe we're really running it down there. Yeah, we're for sure. Talking. You got to have a good sense of humor. You got to be able to shit talk and you can't get butt hurt. Yeah. Those are great requirements. Totally. For a friend. Yeah. We recently like some people take so much of what we say so seriously and they're just like they have explosive diarrhea similar to what you see at the Marshalls or the Target bathrooms yep. <laughs> in the comment section. And they're just like, these girls are so negative and didn't. And I'm just like, OK, number one, why do you care? <laughs> number two, so what if we are negative? And number three, fuck off. Exactly. <laughs> number four, suck pumps his dick. Suck my dick. Yeah. Let's get that on a t-shirt. We do. <laughs> I know a girl. She's an LLC. She'll print it up for you. <laughs> She's got one. Seriously. No, I'm, I'm sure you do too. Jeez. Okay. Had it or hit it? Public Venmo transactions. Isn't this just weird? Have you seen these it's before? Weird. Yes. What are you showing? Just put it on private. I, I don't know why people don't do that. I just got on Venmo, but I have a Venmo story for my divorce law. Oh, let's hear it. So I had a client <laughs> that she got blocked on. I mean, her ex-husband blocked her on every forum, every social media, telephone, email. Like she was 100% blocked, but she can still access them on Venmo. Stop. So she, <laughs> she would send him like 50 cents every day and like motherfuck him. <laughs> to, write, to write the message? Yes. Yeah, the message was just like, you're a cocksucker, little dick, motherfucker. I mean, just one after the other after the other. So then we get a motion about it, obviously, with the court, like make her stop doing this. And so I talked to her and I'm like, hey, you know, there is no way that I can go in front of a judge and try to sell this, that this was not malicious when you intended to do it. She goes, I, I did it and I was malicious. <laughs> Well, that's 50 cents is a small price to pay to really get your message across. But like you know? several times a day, every day. But yeah. you know what? That's a in really public. good tip. That's a really good tip for the listener. If you're going through a total manic spiral meltdown and you've just gone fucking crazy <laughs> and you're there and you're blocked from everything, go, go look into Venmo. Venmo. Yeah. yeah. That's your last resort. It really is. You know, I mean, that's that's your last defense right there to get your crazy out there. <laughs> It is the whole thing is crazy. I just I I'm I'm seeing like people I know that are like splitting the weirdest bills, and I don't know why I'm eating it with popcorn. I'm just like eating it all up. I'm like, oh, this is weird. <laughs> what are I'm they like, buying? What how they do they know each other? <laughs> <laughs> it's like sushi emoji, a kiss. I'm like, wait, that doesn't. I'm confused here. Listen, everybody, get on Venmo, start searching. You know what's interesting? I get on there and I see it, and I see pumps paying all these like random female names, and it's just the scissor emoji. Shut and up. I'm trying to figure out what's going on and it's like you're connecting the dots yeah, here from pumps to sharon scissor emoji <laughs> and then it's true. like the you know like the lesbian emoji of the two girls with the heart and i mean the girls dancing with their legs kicked out yeah inside. those the ballerinas <laughs> we know those girls yeah yeah there's yeah. just a lot of fuckery going on on pumps's venmo just put it on private it's nobody's right. business. yeah you keep your scissoring in private pumps for yeah. god's sake i think sakes. i've venmoed three times in my entire life i've seen them it's that scissor <laughs> shit <laughs>
It's always that scissor shit. <laughs> Maybe it was for a haircut. Zachariah, like you flew to Oklahoma City to see us. And I would do it again and again. And more people should come here. Oklahoma City is a beautiful place. I know. It really is nice. It yes. is. It is nice. And I love that. Like you will always be so close to our heart for doing that. We're going to see you. We're going to be in New York. Yes. On the hot shit tour. We want you to come to Brooklyn. I can't wait. I'm yes. I'm just uh, stone's throw away from there now. So now you're in my neck of the woods. Yes. yes. Everybody go follow Zachariah. Go listen to his podcast and leave us a five-star review about Princess Diana's clap. Go to our, <laughs> our bio. And it's not the STD clap. It's her physical clap. And I was like, what? <laughs> Did you think it was the STD? No, I was like, why should I? What? Okay, it took me a second. Um, and then go to our bio. Look at all the stuff. Follow us on all the shit. And pump, tell us, tell them when we'll see them. Oh, Patreon. Patreon Documentary Club every Wednesday. And we will see you next Tuesday or Thursday or both. Thank you, Zachariah. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye.